The easiest way to draw wavy hair is to consider them as ribbons. And by ribbons, I mean this kind of shape, not this one. The curvier it is, the curlier your hair would look. Now I will boldly assume that you wanna draw these curls on a head, so let's summon our bald head. And what do we do with bald heads? We smooch it. Mwah. But also, we draw basic shape of hair on top of it. This will make it easier for you to place the ribbons later on. I'm also gonna divide it in two. That way, we can work on one side at a time. This would be the root of the hair, and I'll start drawing the ribbons here. As for how many ribbons you should draw, well, there's really no rule, like do whatever you want. But personally, I like to draw more curls near the face. Because in a portrait, the audience will focus on the character's face. So I prefer to draw more details on that area. And just draw whatever, well not whatever, but just draw the basic shape where it's further from the face. I use airbrush to apply soft shadows first. Usually I apply it on these areas, just a general placement. But if you're still unsure, please refer to your reference. Then add some blobs of darker color for the hard shadow. Don't worry about the curls for now, we'll deal with them later. Now erase to make Hyundai logos. You know I, I don't even drive a Hyundai, I drive a Honda. Is that piece of information crucial for this tutorial? Of course not. Now add details on the Hyundai logo, no need to be too tidy, just draw a bunch of lines so it looks more like hair. Again, don't worry about the curls for now, procrastination is key. Okay, back to our ribbon for a sec, let me add soft shadow real quick and then apply shadow on top and then here. And also here, if it's nearing the, um, the uh, I don't know what to call this area, the folds, yeah, let's just call it that. If it's nearing the folds or the root of the hair, the darker the shadow would be. Don't forget to highlight the rim to make it stand out from the rest of the hair. Do the same thing on the other curls. Do not draw too many details underneath the curls. We don't want that area to overpower our main focus here. I still paint wavy shapes though, just not as curvy. This is more like... Um, chili pepper shape instead of ribbons. Now you can just use the same technique to paint the other side. Or, or, you can just copy, paste, and then flip. You're welcome ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and by the way, I use this brush to paint. I got a lot of questions about what brushes I use, even though I answered multiple times in my previous videos. But I only use this. Well, that and airbrush. That's it. Use low opacity to blend. Don't use the smudge tool not recommended. Fung, what about the highlight? Okay, there are some levels of highlights I usually use, so bear with me. The first one is the basic highlight. I only apply lighter color on normal layer, not add layer or color dodge layer. Well, at least not yet. I'll talk about that later. If you use add or color dodge right away, the highlights might look unnatural and the hair would look like really oily, like oily London. Again with the Hyundai logo, and don't forget to highlight the rim of the curls. If you think the highlight is too strong, erase it softly with airbrush. Okay, highlights level 2 is not actually a highlight. It's more like adding more colors so the hair look more interesting. Create overlay layer, lower opacity, and pick whatever color you like. I recommend less saturated colors so the hair doesn't look too bright. You can change the color with filter, hue, and saturation. For highlight level 3, we can finally use the add layer. You can use color dodge, but I prefer add because the glow is prettier. Apply soft lighting using airbrush. Just apply it softly, oh so gently. Now create another add layer on top. This is the last one, I promise. Lower the opacity, and using the hard brush, apply stronger and smaller highlights. Man, look at that glow. Make Hyundai logo, add some lines, and we are done. Fung, that was too many steps. My brother in Christ. Beauty needs time, and effort, and hard work, and tears. By the way, you can also add some hair strands for extra something something. And if you merge all the layers, and then go to filter hue and saturation once more, you can change the hair color. You like red? It's pretty cool. Okay, let's move on to curly hair. You can just draw a curvier version of the ribbons, but if you wanna draw a character with a lot of curls, drawing these shapes would be too exhausting. So. To save my hand from carpal tunnel, I will simplify the shape into croissants. Lots and lots of croissants. I'm gonna prepare our next bald head and draw the big shape of the hair first. Wait, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, we gotta smooch it. 
divide the shape into. I'm gonna use green over here because I'm gonna draw some fringe. This is optional by the way, I just like drawing fringe. And since I'm gonna paint this later, I don't draw the curls in much details. As you can see, I leave some areas blank. It's better to keep your sketch simple if you're gonna paint the portrait because it can be too distracting if there are too many details. So just focus on the fluffiness. We'll add the soft shadows real quick and also hard shadows. Leave the curls for later. Remember, procrastinate. Not for long though because we actually gonna start painting the curls right now. Lower the brush opacity and draw the, pardon my French, croissants. <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? Okay, for this, use big brush and low opacity. This way, we have a fluffy and volumized, I don't think that's a word, a non-flat hair base. Let's just call it that. Before we add detailed curls on top, for this part of the hair, the one placed behind the face, we'll leave it in less details as to not overpower the details in the face. After merging the layer, start painting over the sketch. This might look overwhelming to paint, so the way I paint the curls is like this. You can go ahead and pause and read. Just remember that this is just the base shading. So focus on the fluffiness instead of details. Once you already familiarize yourself with the shading technique, you can just turn off your brain and just enjoy the shading process. You know there's this video, classical music for when you're on that line. I listened to it while doing this shading and my god do I feel like an anime villain. Soda. <laughs> the music is really good though. I recommend checking it out if you're on a deadline and need a boost of motivation and energy. Okay, for the other half of the hair, I'll just shade it really simply. Don't want it to be too detailed. I will add a tiny little curl here near the face. I will first add darker curls. And yes, I realize you guys probably can't see it clearly. Let me lower the opacity. And yeah, basically I just made a bunch of curls with darker color first. And afterwards, I use lighter color to draw more curls. I say curls a lot. There's really no rhymes or rules on how you wanna draw these curls. You don't even have to draw them following the hair direction. Like if you wanna draw them like this, go for it. That's the beauty of drawing curly hair. You can just go crazy. We'll add the base highlight just like we did before. Hope you guys been paying attention. You wanna add extra curls? Just add extra curls. Fix the shape real quick with liquify. Before adding saturated colors, I will apply some makeup to the face so the portrait doesn't look weird. The rest is basically the same as the wavy one. You don't have to pick orange color. Obviously, pick whatever color you want. But for me, by far, orange is the prettiest color for highlight because it looks like the sun is shining on her. You know, I was planning to add braided hair tutorial as well for this video, but <sighs> oh boy, Fong needs some sleep. Bye! <laughs>